Hey, what's up everyone? So today I want to talk about the top reasons why your grade sucks in the 10 plus years that I've been a professional colorist. I've seen a little bit of everything and I just want to share the top reasons why filmmakers get a grade that maybe doesn't look so good. And so let's jump right into it. Here they are in no particular order. Number one is you did not plan for a grade or a look. I see this all the time and it's basically filmmakers, they have a project, they don't think about the look at all, or they just maybe barely think about it. And they go out, they shoot, and then they edit, they get the picture lock. And it's not until that moment that they start wondering, oh, how is my movie or my project or whatever going to look? And so then they go, they just, you know, they do a quick grade or something, or maybe they find a LUT and just slap it on there. And then before you know it, their movie just doesn't look great things don't match it doesn't really have a cohesive vision with the overall project and that i think is one of the first signs of a beginner is that they have a project and it doesn't have a style or a unique look of any kind so my bit of advice to you is start thinking about the grade from the beginning have a lookbook you know have images for inspiration and then think of putting all of those rules that you created for yourself at the beginning into the production when you're shooting so that when you get in post-production, you know, 50 to 60% of your look should already be baked into the image. And that's the way you get a very clean, polished look versus just having color be an afterthought where you just slap something on there and then it just looks honestly, you know, pretty amateurish and it doesn't look great. And then you sit there and you fiddle with the color forever and you can't really get something that you're really happy with. And number two is that there is no color story. One thing you'll see with all of these tips is that they're all kind of linked together and they're all kind of related. So having a color story. So first of all, what is a color story? Color story is usually what color palettes do you have in every scene that builds up to create a story for your film or your project. For example, if your film starts off happy, maybe at the beginning your colors are brighter, they're happier, they're more saturated. Maybe you have a lot of reds and yellows and oranges. And then maybe as the project goes along, you know, your project gets darker and moodier or something. Maybe your overall luminance gets darker. Maybe you start pushing more blues and greens and just, you know, more uncomfortable colors. That's the idea of having a color story. Now, you don't necessarily need this just for a movie, just for a short film or a feature film. You, th you see this all of the time in commercials, you know, high-end commercials like Nike commercials, Adidas commercials, things like that, where you, if you pay attention, you'll notice that, you know, they'll have very high contrast, very colorful, very muted colors. And that's what color story is, is how the image and how the colors push the story forward and it's not just a random LUT applied or a random look applied or something that doesn't have much thought behind it and you just balance the white and then you call it a day. If you have a color story, your image will be much more powerful and it can have similar effect to something like great sound design, great music, a background score, something like that. So have a color story. Okay, and so the next one is that your set dressing is all wrong. So this goes to set dressing, art department, wardrobe, anything like that. And it's connected to color story and it's connected to planning your look at the very beginning and not at the very end. And one of the things that I always tell people when they ask me, what can I do to make my film look more like this or like that or have this certain look? Most people are surprised when I mention set dressing, art department, wardrobe. If you look at a lot of movies out there and a lot of commercials and even photographs, when you're creating a look, you'll notice that a lot of that is already in the image, it's on set, it's by having, you know, certain color backgrounds, certain color wardrobe or furniture, or, you know, that kind of thing. The classic example are, you know, that everyone will probably think of right away is Wes Anderson films or, you know, a ton of other projects like that. So if you're talking about look and having a great grade, a very, high-end awesome polished grade where everyone's gonna wonder how you got that look think about wardrobe think about set dressing think about furniture think about the colors of the walls think about the color of the light and i think you'll have a much better grade okay and so this next one is honestly probably one that if i were to pick one that everyone has done 
it's this next one. And that is that they get used to their footage and then they don't do anything else after that. So what I mean by that is you shoot, you maybe apply a LUT to it just while, the, while you edit the project and then you just get used to it. You cut it down, you get used to it and then it looks good to you. You don't even think about it and then maybe at the end you watch it and say, oh, you know what, you just maybe make small tweaks and you finish it and you send it out into the world and you don't realize it actually doesn't look that great. That actually to a lot of people, especially you know, cinematographers and colorists and other filmmakers, it just looks like you applied a lot to it and you lose track of things like, oh, this shot doesn't match and that shot doesn't match and the close-ups are a little brighter, these are a little bit more contrasty, there's no sort of, you know, look to the project, no color story to the project. And so that's one of the biggest dangers in making your color not look great is that you get used to it, especially, you know, believe it or not, even with log footage. They get used to it and they end up liking it, it grows on them, and then they just leave it as is. So definitely, whenever you are editing and working on something, if you do apply a temporary LUT for just the edit, remember to take it off, start from scratch, you know, maybe watch other films, other commercials and things like that, so that you start getting some sort of ideas. Um, but again, if you followed all the previous tips that I gave you, you won't be in that situation where you just apply something to it or even leave it flat log look and call it a day, you'll get to the point where you might apply a template, but if you plan things, you might even have a LUT that you created on set that then applies to your footage. And then when you're editing, you're you know three quarters of the way there. So again, all of these go together. So don't get used to your footage. Don't think that it looks great. Always analyze your footage, always analyze your story so that you can have the best grade you possibly can. Okay, so on to the next one, and that is that your look is a cliche. And what I mean by that is that there's always trends, there's always looks that are popular. The classic one that you hear about all the time is the teal and orange look. It's a great look, it's something that works really well because of the color theory behind it and you know all the films that have used it, but it is something that has been really overused. And if there's one look that I see a lot of beginning filmmakers use is that one, so I would say, be aware of the looks out there, what's popular and what's being overdone. You don't want your movie to look like an Instagram filter. So like I said before, think of color ahead of time and always try to craft your look for your story and for your footage and not just take a look, take a filter and a LUT and try to cram it onto your footage because that really usually doesn't work. And if you just shoot something and then uh, apply a look to it, regardless of why you're doing it, regardless of the story, regardless of the footage, then you're basically gonna end up with a movie, like I said, that just looks like an Instagram filter. So be aware of trends, try to make something original for your footage, and I think your projects will stick out a lot more. And so the last one is a pretty easy one. It's a pretty basic one. And that's basically that your footage was not properly shot. So you have underexposed shots, you have un overexposed shots, you have stuff that isn't white balance, it's very blue, it's very orange, it's very green. Um, so that's something that, again, you can't necessarily fix in post. Another top reason, especially we're in, with beginners, of why your film does not look good or your project doesn't look good is because they just, you know, they maybe blew out a lot of the highlights, they blew out a lot of the skies, they blew out a lot of the windows and skin tones or they underexpose things. And then in post, you're trying to do a grade and you can't fix it, you can recover it, and that's when you end up with something that looks very harsh, very video-like, and it just does not look great. So what I say to that one is definitely it's about, again, not the camera you have or you know whether you're shooting in RAW or log or anything like that. It's just knowing your craft, knowing cinematography, watching your highlights, your shadows, the noise, the color balance to make sure that you have a great image to start with because even if you do all the other ones that I told you, if you come out with footage that is not well shot, then you can't really do much with the grade and you end up with something that just does not look good and it looks very amateurish and it'll stick out as something made by beginners. So those are my tips, hopefully they helped. I'd say on your next project, definitely think about all of these, 
think ahead, plan ahead, think about set dressing, think about wardrobe, and think about your look and your color story. So let me know if you've done any of these in the comments and if this video helped at all, definitely like it, subscribe it, and I will see y'all later.